Today we will be talking about God's Isaiah, Isa, Prophet Isa, which is the Arabic name for Jesus, was God's Isaiah sent to mislead. Now, Isaiah, his name means salvation of the Lord, and Isa, or Jesus, his name means salvation. Isaiah was God's misleader, and God used Jesus as his Isaiah, as his misleader. Now, this is the only way to connect the Quran and the Gospels, because Jesus is spoken of in the Gospels, okay? He was sent to confirm the Torah and the Gospels. It all makes sense now. Okay, there's no need to make excuses for the Gospels. There's no need to make excuses for them because Isa, Prophet Jesus, is doing exactly what Allah intended him to do, and that is to mislead the people. Now, I have two articles. Both of these articles are coming from Christians. I was surprised. When in Isaiah chapter 6, 9 through 10, following the often cited passage about Isaiah's famous vision in Isaiah 6, 1 through 4, his purification with the coal, Isaiah kissed the rock and his sin was taken away. Oh, don't let me get started. Don't let me get started on the cobblestone. I will keep going. Isaiah 6, 5 through 7, and Isaiah's famous offer in Isaiah 6 through 8, celebrated in songs, here I am, send me, that exhort Christians today to become missionaries, that God wanted Isaiah to do the very opposite of what missionaries do. Go, say to these people, keep listening, but do not understand. Keep looking, but do not perceive. Make the minds of these people dumb, deaf in their ears and blind their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their minds, turn back, repent, and be healed. Weren't prophets sent by God to tell people to understand, to know him better, and repent so God can heal them? I'm sure most people would say yes. But in this passage, God wanted the exact opposite. Otherwise, They might see, hear, understand, and be healed. So God's purpose for Isaiah, he intended him to misguide his people. Isaiah wanted his audience to see two different things. He wanted them to see that God is God and there's nobody else. But he also wanted them to see the picture of a son being born who will be called Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God. Okay, and he would be bruised for your iniquities. He put two visions out there for the people. Which one will you believe? Will you believe in the deception or will you believe in the obvious truth that God is God and that there is nobody else beside him? He was sent to mislead the people, but speak the truth. Isaiah was a very unique prophet from all other prophets. God is purposely telling Isaiah to mislead his people. Now, this brings out the true attributes of the Almighty God. In the 99 names of Allah, one of his names is Al Hadi, okay, that is the guider, and another of his names is Al Mahil, that is the misguider or the misleader. Now, this is coming from a Christian. He agrees that God intended for Isaiah to do the opposite of what missionaries are doing today, and that is reaching the world for Christ. God wanted Isaiah to mislead the people. He wanted him to mislead. Now we can understand God's Isaiah, Isa, prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, better. Isaiah was sent to mislead the people and Jesus was sent to mislead the people. Now I have another article coming from a Christian. And these Christians making these articles don't even know that they're proving my point. 
They are proving my point. Everything on earth, okay, submits to Allah willingly or unwillingly. Everything goes according to his plan and goes according to his will. Many people do not realize that the Quran not only describes Allah as the best of all deceivers, but it also depicts him as a misleader who causes people to be deceived and misled from the path of salvation. So this Christian is saying that Allah intends to mislead people from the path of salvation. I agree with you. I am total agreement with you. All right. Many are also unaware of the fact that two of the names, the 99 names of Allah happen to be Al-Hadi, the guide, the one who guides, and Al-Madil, and that is the misguider or the misleader. The one who misleads and causes to go astray. The Muslim scripture contains passages after passages stating that it is Allah who makes people go astray, since he is free to mislead and disgrace whomever he so desires. Say, O Muhammad, O Allah, possessor of the kingdom, you give the kingdom to whom you will, and you take the kingdom from whom you will, and you endure with honor whom you will, and you humiliate whom you will. In your hand is the good. Verily you are able to do all things. That is Quran 326. Then what is the matter with you? That you are divided into two parties about the hypocrites. Allah has cast them back to disbelief. Because of what they have earned, do you want to guide him? Whom Allah has made to go astray, and he whom Allah has made to go astray, you will never find for him any way of guidance. That is Quran 488. And we sent not a messenger except with the language of his people, in order that he might make the message clear for them. Then Allah misleads whom he wills, and he guides whom he wills. And he is the Almighty, the All-Wise. Okay, that is Quran 14, 4. And whom Allah guides, he is led aright. But he whom he leads astray, for such you will find no helper or aliyah. Besides him, and we shall gather them together on the day of resurrection, on their faces, blind, dumb, and deaf, their abode will be held. Whenever it abates, we shall increase for them the fierceness of the fire. That is Quran 1797. Thus Allah leads astray whom he wills, and he guides whom he wills. And none can know the host of your Lord but he. And this hell is nothing else than a warning reminder to mankind. That is Quran 74.31. So this Christian who did this article had no clue that he would be helping my point. Everything that was stated is true. The truth about God is that God will deceive you. Now I'm going to get that for you in Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 10. Because understudied men. They can't see that the God of their very own Bible is a deceiver. This is going to be Jeremiah 4.10. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, surely thou hast greatly deceived this people and Jerusalem, saying, Ye shall have peace, whereas the sword reacheth unto the soul. So Jeremiah in this verse in scripture is calling God a deceiver. Okay? He is saying you have greatly deceived Israel. All right. Now I want to show you some more scriptural evidence. This is going to be Psalms 18, 25. With the merciful, thou will show thyself merciful. With an upright man, thou will show thyself upright. With the pure, thou will show thyself pure. And with the forward, thou will show thyself forward. Now that word forward actually means deceptive. It actually means 
false. Okay, so God will deceive you. He will. That is one of his names, and that's what he's been doing this entire time. He deceived Pharaoh. All right. He deceives all those who think they are deceiving him. Now, I got more scriptural evidence. This is going to be in the story. It's either in Kings or it's in Chronicles. And I want to go to the book of Chronicles. And as I told you all before, when you look at the book of Kings and when you look at the book of Chronicles, the book of Kings represents the Torah. It represents the book of the Jews. But when you go into the book of Chronicles, it represents the Quran, Quran It represents the Quran. And remember, the book of Chronicles has details in it that is not in the book of Kings. Just like there's stories about the prophets in the Quran that differs from the stories that is in our Bible. This was an amazing truth. I've seen this and I see I said, wow. The book of Chronicles and the book of Kings is just like the Bible and the Quran. There's details in it. All right. That's in our book. That's not in your book. And our book shines the spotlight on things that you and I both differ about. That is an amazing truth when you look at the book of Kings and when you look at the book of Chronicles. But let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 18. Verse 21. And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, thou shalt entice him and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. So the God of our very own Bible, he will deceive you. OK, he will use a lying spirit. Now, think about Abraham. Abraham lied about his sister. Isaac lied about his wife. OK, Rahab, she lied concerning the spies. OK, there's things that God does. OK, to show you that he is the God that creates both good and evil. And I'm going to get that scripture for you, too. This is going to be Isaiah 45, 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, God creates evil and God creates good. God can deceive you. And this is in your very own Bible. So everything I brought out in the Quran, speaking of God being a misleader or a misguider, his same attributes is seen in your very own Bible. All right, going on. I want to go to the meat of the topic. The meat of the topic is this. Isaiah was sent by God Almighty to mislead the people. He was sent by the Almighty God to misguide the people. And it is the same thing with Jesus Christ. He was sent to be a stumbling block to you. He was sent to be a stone of stumbling. Okay? And he was sent to be God's Isaiah. He was sent to misguide you. OK, can't nobody come to God except God draws them. And I'm going to get that scripture. This is going to be John 6, 44. No man can come to me except the father which have sent me draw him. Now, when we look at that, only God can draw the heart. Only God can allow you to be misguided or guided rightly. All right. And Jesus revealed this truth. OK, when he was speaking of his flesh being eaten and his blood being drunken. OK, in John six sixty six, that's when all his disciples, OK, all the people that was following him, they followed him no more. And he was left with only his disciples because only God can guide you. 
Only you can be led astray by the Most High. So that's why I don't go into a huge argument with people. Okay, I try my best not to. Because some people are rightly guided and some people are not rightly guided. Now, I want to go to the beginning of Isaiah's exhortation. All right. And I want to do a little history because we have a lot of people talking reckless about the Kaaba stone. They have a lot of ill words referring to the Kaaba. I'm going to show you something that you probably did not know. Okay, now I'm going to give you a little history on the Kaaba stone. All right. Now, the Kaaba stone, the stone was given to Adam on his fall from paradise and it was originally white but has become black by absorbing the sins of thousands of pilgrims now that's just a brief breakdown of it now what's ironic is when you go to the book of isaiah chapter 6 verse 5 then said i woe is me for i am undone Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this have touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is Purged. So Isaiah's sins was taken away by kissing a rock. Now this is in our Bible. You don't hear none of these Christians or Israelite camp leaders bringing this out. But the very man that was of unclean lips, and I believe this is a shadow and type of the Gentile messenger, Mohammed, peace and blessings be upon him, because Isaiah said, I seen the king, the Lord of hosts. And in Islam, we refer to God himself being king. In Christianity, they refer to Jesus as being king. So in this same entire book, Isaiah was told to make the ears of the people heavy and to make their hearts fat. And he painted a picture of a son who would be called God and that there was going to come one who would be made an offering for sin. And that all was a huge mousetrap for the disbelievers. God set it up that way. He set it up that way. So you need to watch your mouth. You need to watch your mouth speaking about things you don't know. Keep in mind. There's not one scripture in the entirety of the Bible where God says verbatim that Jesus is going to die for your sins. You have no ground to stand on. As a matter of fact, all you have is assumption and speculation, just like the messenger Mohammed told us. And I want to read that. I want to read that. This is going to be Quran 4, 157. And it reads, and for boasting, we killed the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, but they neither killed nor crucified him. It was only made to appear so. Even those who argue for this crucifixion are in doubt. They have no knowledge whatsoever, only making assumptions. They certainly did not kill him now the quran says it was only made to appear so and we see that in isaiah god instructed isaiah to make the ears of the people heavy to mislead them okay and it was only made to appear that they crucify jesus but all this was a big deception it was a mousetrap for the disbelievers god loves doing war without bloodshed and he loves destroying those who do not believe and he takes pleasure in misleading those who do not really believe okay now i'm going to show you another scripture 
So when you read the Quran, the Quran tells you exactly that it was only made to appear so. And we see that God instructed Isaiah to mislead and Jesus was God's Isaiah, Prophet Isa, peace be upon him was sent to mislead you. All you have is assumption. All you have is conjecture. You have no real evidence coming from the Most High where he literally says Jesus is going to die for your sins. The strongest scripture the Christians can pull about Jesus being crucified is the very same book God told Isaiah to go and mislead the people. So it's right. All they have is assumption. All they have is conjecture. It was only made to appear that way. This was God's mousetrap. And I tell you today that Jesus was God's Isaiah. Now, I want the scripture in the Quran that is going to tell us how God Almighty used the disciples. This is Quran 61.14. Allah said, O oh, believers, stand up for Allah. As Jesus, son of Mary, asked the disciples, Who will stand up with me for Allah? The disciples replied, We will stand up for Allah. Then a group from the children of Israel believed while another disbelieved. We then supported the believers against their enemies. So they Prevailed. So here we have scripture of Jesus asking his disciples who will stand up with me for Allah. And the disciples replied, we will stand up for Allah. Let me tell you something. God got you in his trick bag. He's got you in his trick bag. He has used you to misguide you. All right. You cannot guide someone that God wants to misguide. OK, you can't do that. And if God intended to mislead you in believing that Jesus Christ died for your sins, then you have been rightly misguided. All right. So there you have it. We have concluded. I didn't want to take a lot of your time today. I just wanted to show you scriptures from the Bible where God is a deceiver. God is a misguider and show you that he is the same God in the Quran. He is a misguider. Your Jesus, your Isa, is nothing more than a Isaiah sent to mislead you, sent to make your ears heavy, sent to make your hearts fat, sent to make you believe Isaiah 53 so that you can be misguided. Shalom Israel and assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.